Thank you, John. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Um, so I try to be quick. Um, so the first thing that it's not uh, so okay. So I'm part of Zero. Zero is a big research center funded by XFI. We have seven. We have the seven um, universities in Ireland that are part of the partner in Europe. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with uh, multiple partners in um, collaborators in Europe, uh, in Vienna, uh, in Austria, in Portugal, in France, and also um, I had a project with uh, IBM in Toronto, Canada, and I continued working with them. The, um, I will show you what I did with Kogai a little bit, and then how we progress into the academic research questions. And I was also in IBM a few years ago, uh, not anymore. I was uh, an industry fellow from SFI. So it's a different perspective from um, from the two previous talks, and I will try to show you the difference with it. So first, that's probably the, my naive idea of what the data center was before my project with IBM. So it was a unmanned, very neat environment, um, and everything is the same. It's exactly exactly the same rack or servers and so on and so forth. And then when you study the demographics of data centers, what I did with IBM you realize that it's much more heterogeneous than that. It is much more complicated and much more complex. So for instance, if you have a, a history in a company, in, an, in the enterprise or a company, you have acquisitions, mergers, and uh, you have uh, you know, companies that just got acquired, for instance, don't want to uh, get rid of all the servers that they were using. Maybe their, their customers don't want to get rid of the servers. So you have, um, you have old servers, you have inefficient servers, but that you have to keep because they, they've been they, they, they are known uh, for being reliable, and you know that the customers don't want to change them, or the, the administrators don't want to change them. And you know, anyway, you don't change every year all the servers in your data center. So it doesn't look exactly like that. It's, um, it's um, it can be a bit more messy. There is a lot of people. There is a lot of um, uh, people doing some uh, recovery if there is any problem, trying uh, to in install new resources, uh, doing some routing and so on and so forth. Um, and they are real people, and they have special preferences and objectives, and they may not be always um, in, in agreement with the company. So you would, you would find uh, um, uh, phenomenons like siloing, where you have a, a hosting department, for instance, with their own servers, and they know what's best for them, and they don't want to apply sort of a global policy. Um, and you know, there's some competition as well. So it's very a complex um, uh, environment. So in my situation, I don't do dynamic allocation like the two um, sort of presented before. It's totally offline. So you can imagine the quarterly or monthly or, or bi-weekly um, reorganization of the data centers. And for that, you need to find the, the best possible placement or the good placements. And you have to make, to make sure that everybody on the team, so the, the enterprise, but also the manager, the capital allocators of the different data centers, they, they agree uh, with what you, you're going to do. Um, so the first thing that you have to notice is that um, it's, it's a complex problem and contrary to John, I don't want to use a single weighted sum of, of the different objectives. I want to leave it as a, a multi-objective sort of, um, problem. Why do I want to do that? Because there is some managers that are going to make a decision based on uh, some optimization that you're providing. Uh, I will show you uh, quickly. So here you have two objectives, so electricity and reliability, and for both um, you want to minimize, actually that's unreliability if you like. So you want to minimize electricity cost and you want to maximize reliability or minimize the unreliability. Uh, you have a, the initial placement in black here and you, have, you find a lot of possible new placements. Some of them are good, but the red ones, because they, they're, they're maximizing uh, a, a particular dimension. So A for instance is the best one in terms of uh, unreliability, the most reliable possible placement. And D is the best one in terms of electricity. Uh, so yeah, uh, B is good as well because it's better than all the others in a combination of the objectives. E and F, they're not as good, and we don't keep them. E, for instance, has another placement, so B, which is better in terms of cost and better in terms of reliability, so we don't want E, okay? So we keep only the red ones, they're called the Pareto solution, they're on the Pareto front, which is a good one. Uh, it may not be the exact best solution, but that's at some point what you get. And as a, as a capital allocator, as a manager, I want to be able to navigate those things. For instance, I have some policies and I say, I want at least to save that much in um, cost, electricity cost, and I want the reliability to improve by that much. But then among <coughs> those two solutions, I have to make a decision. Which one is the best? You, can, I, can I save a bit more electricity 
or can I, um, can I um, uh, um, you know, having a reliability that's not as good, or do I want the reliability to be really better? And here, we have managers that are going to make a decision. So we keep it as a multi-objective problem. In the domain, multi-objective is, uh, is known for, to be a challenging and a relevant problem anyway. So uh, that, that not only was written with the text, but um, in one of the most important uh, articles in the domain from uh, Rashkumar Buyas and his team, uh, they describe multi-objective placements as one of the challenges for cloud computing. But if you look at the literature, there's nothing like a proper um, um, multi-objective placement. Most of the time, they claim to do multi-objective, but they do a weighted sum, they use a weighted sum of the objectives. And they say, we, that's a preference of the user, so we do the, multi the, the weighted sum. And it's fine for a lot of things, like dynamic placement, pure multi-objective would probably be a bit silly. But, uh, if it, but it's not multi-objective when you do um, uh, a weighted sum. Or uh, you would find some uh, proper multi-objective, but on very, very small scales. So in my work, I really wanted to take this problem of uh, multi-objective placements seriously. And the second thing is that the enterprise is decentralized. So you have several locations, several um, hosting departments, and they can be in competitions, the managers, the capital allocators, they may disagree on what's good for them. In one country, uh, for instance, the cost of licensing can be more important than the, the electricity footprint of your, um, your data center. So you, and you have to make sure that all the different stakeholders, all the different people involved in the, in the optimization uh, decision are on board. So you need to find incentive. You have to tell them, OK, you will have your say in the final placements, which makes, again, the problem more difficult. So this presentation, and then we go very quickly through it. Uh, we know that multi-objective machine resettlement is challenging for exact solutions. So for instance, constraint programming or mixed integral programming. <coughs> um, but they give you good solution. And I will show you first that it is a challenge. You can't find uh, going for the exact solution is impossible. I mean, if you're from the domain of optimization, you know that's, that's, that's the case. But uh, we'll show you why. The other, on the other side, you could use some heuristics. For instance, you, you could go for um, uh, the full search or random search. Problem with those is that the search space is so big and so constrained that random search will give you a lot of infeasible solutions too many constraints, if you find a random solution, there's a good chance that it's actually not a solution, it's infeasible. And the local search, they're just, um, the planning or whatever, they're just looking around current solutions, and they will never be able to explore the vast, very, very big uh, search space. So um, a, a solution could be to use um, uh, evolution, uh, and the prime is uh, the other type of solution that you could have, evolutionary solution, for instance. If you don't give them good solution, they don't really progress in it either. So the idea that we, we have here is to use some of those um, hybrid approaches where you mix different evolutionary local search, uh, random search. But you give them good solutions from CPLEX, from a, a, a good solver, a good optimization solver. And I will show you how you can improve that here. And uh, the last thing is, can we come up with a sort of decentralized version of our algorithm that would allow the different allocators to still have a say on the, on the final placements. So um, everybody probably understand the, the context. You have machines in racks. Um, so there's a lot of concepts here, neighborhoods, locations. So you can imagine data centers is a location. And uh, a rack would be, uh, and all the machines in, in, um, in a rack would be uh, neighbors. You have virtual machines that can be in services. The services can be connected to each other. Uh, the sort of the background, if you like. Uh, so it's, we didn't invent this particular uh, model. It was given by Google at, um, at an optimization challenge a few years ago. And we used that and we improved it to make it more uh, realistic, if you like. Uh, there's plenty of constraints. I don't know what happened to the formulas, but uh, so but classic formulas um, for capacity. You don't want to overload a, a server. Uh, the, the conflict <coughs> there is probably some virtual machines that you don't want to put on the same rack if they belong to the same serv uh, service, for instance. Uh, dependency, there could be services that uh, rely on each other, so you have to put them close to each other. And spread. You may want to spread your services uh, on, or the virtual machine belonging to service on uh, different uh, locations. We 
have three objectives. So it's multi-objective, we work only with three objectives. But our approach can really uh, extend to any number of objectives and you can modify them. I'm sure people, uh, reliability is okay, so you don't want to overload. It's, it's a static reliability definition. So we want to keep, for instance, 25% of the servers, uh, CPUs or whatever, unused. Uh, migration, so we have the cost for migration, migrating machines, takes uh, resources, and electricity. So again, sorry for the uh, formulas. But electricity is just a linear formulation of electricity cost. So how much does the server cost or the consume um, when there is no um, workload? And then you just look at how much CPU you're using and you have a linear formulation of electricity. It's, it's not the best formulation, but you, you would find it in the literature quite often, so it's not totally irrelevant either. Um, there was a guy this morning, Ab Abay, from uh, Statergia, I think they use something quite similar to that in their products, if I'm not mistaken. So. And, um, and we have a data set of um, 14 uh, data centers, if you like. So each of them here, each line, is a data center. Uh, so simple data centers and more complicated data centers. Each of them is defined by a number of resources. So two resources could be CPU and RAM, but you can have much more resources than that. Number of machines, uh, so that the servers, number of VMs, and number of services, which um, uh, generate more constraints. And for, um, for uh, is that the PDF? I, I, I have no idea what happened with the PDF. Anyway. Uh, Converted to PowerPoint. Oh, should I should have sent you the PowerPoint then. Uh, and uh, the objective here is to um, find a reassignment in the multi objective um, context in a limited amount of time. So, for the simple um, instances here, we have between 30 seconds and one hour. And for the big one, the difficult one, we accept to find a new reassignment, <coughs> a series of reassignments in up to 10 hours. Uh, it was sort of a agreed uh, uh, with, the, with the collaborators. Like something that would happen in the company if you can give us in 10 hours for a large scale problem. For instance here, you can have 20,000 VMs on 500 servers and uh, 1,700 services. So that generates a lot of constraints on the possible business. The metric that we use, uh, we have three. We have one, which is a number of, so let's call it a quantitative metric. So the number of uh, solutions. A qualitative one, which is called the um, uh, alpha volume, which is a, um, how much space do you cover with the solution, so the red solutions. And the idea is obviously to, the, the further you go, the bigger area is and the bigger the alpha volume is. And the last one is the time, although we have a sort of limited, um, we have a deadline, we have for 10 hours for the big one, for instance, we still measure the time here. So the first question, how, is it, how difficult is the problem as such? So we start with a simple problem, non-multi-objective, uh, we just pick one vector in this space, the identity vector, and we run CPLEX. We run CPLEX for the amount of time. So here I report CPLEX with uh, the tolerance gap, so how far you are from the, from the solution. So here, for instance, we are 50% from the solution. Here, you're very close to the solution, but there's probably a zero that we didn't put here. So you can see that on the allocated time, there's only, two instances, there's only two instances for which I can find the exact solution on one single vector. And for most of them, I stop after uh, a few persons. So uh, probably one person for the A1s. And you can even see that for the Bs, for instance, the difficult ones, I don't find any solution in the 10 hours that I uh, give assigned to um, the solver. So it is a difficult problem. If I try the same problem in, in the multi-objective complex, so now I'm multi-objective, and I use a technique called epsilon constraint, which is just, you cover the, the you use CPLEX, use a, a, a mixed integral linear programming cover, and you try to cover the space by just fixing one dimension, going through all the possible solutions, then moving up, going through again, and so on and so forth. We run, um, so CPLEX on, um, on Sonic, uh, which is a, uh, a supercomputer that we have in UCD, which is part of iCheck. I think it's an old iCheck supercomputer, to be honest, but anyway, it's, it's very good. And we run it to, um, for up to 30 days on each of these instances. Some of them, the blue ones, we found a solution in a bit less than five days for those four. But for the other ones, after 30 days, we still didn't get um, the exact resolution. And we can't even estimate how far we were from that. We found solutions, but we didn't get the full um, 
front. So the question is now, okay, so let's not use CPLEX. But still, CPLEX or the, 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 the solvers, they give you better solutions than any random or local search or genetic algorithm or whatever. So the natural, sort of natural uh, instinct would be to say, okay, I, I still want to use those fast uh, genetic algorithms or whatever, but I want to give them good solutions by running CPLEX and feeding, seeding the good solutions to, um, to genetic algorithms, for instance. So we did a study of uh, what happens for um, uh, if we vary the number of uh, vectors. So uh, in the first experiment, I showed you only one vector. Now we vary one, then three, then five, then seven. And we see how far we can go um, for the different instances. And we also vary the tolerance gap. So how much um, error do we accept? So you can see, for instance, that's one instance here, uh, A13. So in terms of time, if you vary the number of vector, if, if you have a very small gap, 0.5%, uh, you can have uh, you can find one or two vectors, but then you can't find anything else in the time allocated. So you would have to go for uh, at least one person, and you you get um, you can explore seven vectors at max at the maximum. And you have on the other side the upper volume, so the the, the sort of uh, quality of your solutions, and you can see how it's evolved with the number of vectors. Um, so then you can make a decision saying, okay, for that type of data sets with that size, the number of results and so on and so forth. I'd probably go for, for instance, um, there's no point in going for too many vectors. So I'd probably go for seven or five and with a gap of one person. And you will use that. You will find solutions with, uh, with, um, with CPLEX and you will give them to your evolutionary algorithm. So that's what we do here. Uh, in the middle, you have CPLEX, value for CPLEX. And then CPLEX uh, combined with uh, a hybrid uh, algorithm, which uh, makes it um, um, uh, random search, genetic algorithm, NSDA2, and then the local search. So the idea is uh, have my first solution from CPLEX, but that's not a lot, like five for instance, that's not uh, enough for an evolutionary algorithm. So I generate more using graphs for random search, then the genetic algorithm is going to mix them, so it will give me a nice um, Pareto front, and then the local search will improve all these little solutions at the end. And you can see the improvement from CPLEX, so for an, um, uh, an extra 6% in time, you get um, an extra 17% in terms of quality of your solutions. And you multiply the number of solutions by nine. Uh, this number here is just showing you how much you improve from just using the hybrid uh, algorithm uh, itself. So we, uh, more than double. Uh, so just to finish, uh, so the idea now is, okay, that's fine, you address the multi-objective, what about the decentralized na nature of this problem, uh, where you have a data center which is composed of a lot of hosting departments and their competition and so on. So we just created a sort of um, two-level uh, architecture where at the bottom you have a placement, so the managers of the data center can decide themselves what is a good placement for them, a real placement. And at the top, at uh, the bottom, uh, Sorry, at the top uh, level, you have the decision makers at the enterprise level that decide on the assignments. Where do you want to put those virtual machines? So um, you have an iterative process, obviously. Uh, you have the genetic algorithm here with CPLEX sending the solutions to the different data centers and they can say, yes, I want it. I know where to place, to place it. Or no, saying, oh, it's too expensive or it doesn't work for me or whatever. And you iteratively do that. Um, so we did that uh, with, again, the same sort of data center. We added <coughs> different locations, so different data centers in competition with different preferences. And um, we try different solutions. So the problem here is that there is no real um, basic baseline state of the art. So we just compared with other possible placements. So we climbing Python local search and SDA2 um, and some random or mix of random and genetic algorithm. And our Hybrid solution is better, but you know, uh, that's what we can say already here. So, uh, to finish, uh, the problem of a multi objective placement is extremely difficult. Exact solvers will never give you the solution at, uh, at uh, the scale that we are talking about. Uh, but still, we can get some good solutions with CPLEX, for instance, or any um, uh, milk solver. So, maybe we can use that to get good solution, pass, that's what you see here. You pass them onto a uh, genetic algorithm or any um, heuristics and that, we, that can improve quite a bit. So 18% uh, improvements in terms of quality for an extra 6% time, for instance. 
And then we implemented that into a distributed uh, solution where at the bottom, the different capital locators can make that decision, say that I want things to be done. And I don't care about much objective, but I know that for me, cost of licensing or reliability, if I have a virtual machine that um, needs a high reliability, uh, has to be more important than electricity and so on and so forth. And at the top, the company still try to still tries to um, improve um, whatever is important for the decision maker there. That's it.